Hey guys, it's Josh here to talk to you about the Ripple 20 vulnerability. Uh, this is fairly recent. We have detections for this, and so it's it's a pretty interesting one to go over. There's a great blog post on it. I don't next drop. Just look up Xdrop Ripple 20 or the Xdrop blog, and you'll find it. Essentially, what's happening here is there's an exploit in the Trek TCP/IP stack. A couple things happened. Um, I'm not going to go into the extreme details. I'll show you what, where those are available. But there's essentially an exploit that allows you to overload an ICMP message or essentially be able to tunnel inside that to be able to use initial ICMP message. And there's also a way to be able to leverage a TCP IP stack to be able to do a DNS uh, type of exfiltration. So we'll look, kind of look at both those things here. But the upshot is hundreds of millions of devices are affected by this. Essentially think IoT devices, industrial controls, networking controls, printers. Um, the, the team that found it is the JSOF. You can look at them up, JSOF. Essentially, there's a, they did an amazing write-up about the CVEs here that goes into extreme details on how this is leveraged from the DNS side of it as well as the ICMP exploit. But this affects a vast number of devices. And so it can like they even reference to your Stolt. It could be a printer and a fusion pump. And why that matters is essentially if someone gets a hold of that from the outside world, it's either through your VPN or it's exposed to the internet somehow, they can then move laterally within the environment and cause catastrophic damage. And this is hundreds of millions of devices that have this well-known TCP, TCP IP stack in the environment. Great, so what are the things that XDROP can do to be able to assist with that? So let's kind of walk through that. Let me find the video here. And so I'm just gonna do something a little different. I don't have access to um, the Ripple 20 stuff in my lab. So I'm just gonna play over this video and then start to see to kind of show you guys what some of the individual pieces are and I'll just talk over it, right? So in this screencast, cause this, this took a whole lot of mocking up to get it and I just don't have the ability to, to do this in my little lab. But essentially you can see here that we're gonna create a device group for Trek software. You can see it down here. And so we're basically gonna look, that's one of the software um, OS's that XDROP is gonna look for. Um, so we can create a device group around Trek. So when the TCIP stack is used from a Trek perspective, so the Trek TCIP stack, we can automatically detect that for you here. And you can see here, we're gonna click on devices and we're gonna see the individual properties and that's gonna show you, we're looking for the dynamic software, or anything with Trek in it. That allows us to create a group that shows us everything that's communicating over Trek, which is automatically has that pre-existing condition that it's gonna be exposed to potentially Ripple 20. So let's fast forward a little bit here and see what we do here. So we got the two devices. These are happen to be printers, but these could be any kind of IoT device or anything leveraging that Trek TCIP stack. What's really hard about that is there's not a lot of ability to run agents and these things don't typically log. So this is where NDR really plays, network detection and response, right? So this is where, this is our wheelhouse because we're able to pick this data up off the wire directly from the network without agents. So you can see here, we detect that it's, the software is Trek. We're seeing it move back and forth. And so now let's start to understand and we can look up, you know, the individual device that's gonna be communicating that we're gonna be using for the attack. So I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit. And so we're running an attack via Python, you know, from this. We don't necessarily need to go into the details. I just wanna see the output of this attack. So we run the attack and then boom, we got a couple detections here. So I'm gonna pause that. So we've done the ripple scan. So we've detected the scan. There's in that CVE, it talks about a specific, a specifically type of crafted ICMP message, right? That we're starting to look for. And we see that we automatically know, especially when it's combined with Trek software, that that's an issue, right? And so we bubble that detection up and you can see right here in the detection card, there's that one type of message, type 165 OXA5, that matches a known scan for network, uh, for Trek's network stack. So bam, we're seeing someone look for specifically for Trek. There's not a lot, a lot of good reasons to do that. And so that's an initial indicator. And then we have this timeline view that shows all the individual um, detections down here that's con concatenated together in a timeline. So we've seen that the network stack's detected, there's been a Ripple scan, Ripple 20 scan from an ICMP perspective, and we're giving you the records right here. Message type 165 is highlighted. That's what triggered us in this particular detection to say, hey, boom, Ripple 20 is in this scan, and this is why, and this is, and this is something that could be potentially manipulated and exposed to this particular CVE. Cool. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here because we just go over some of the details of it. You can look it up, and so we're going to run another attack here. And then we're going to see um, the result of that attack. And you can see what's cool about this particular attack is it's um, instantaneous. So now, boom, we see that the Ripple 20 exploit attempt IP and IP is added. So now we've actually taken this attack a step further. So we're actually trying to encapsulate inside the IP here. So let's read this here. 
that contained a length value that is less than the actual packet link in capsule inside a fragmented IP packet. So this is using the fragmented IP packet with Ripple 20, so essentially to do remote code execution. And this is part of that CVE that I pointed you up into here with this, that's on JSOF if you wanna read more about it. But the upshot is we are looking for those telltale signatures directly from the wire. We're not relying on hashes. We actually see that in the ICMP packet and say, boom, there's no doubt, no question that that is Ripple 20 and you absolutely need to remediate it. It's gotten through your firewall. This stuff hasn't been patched or you need to completely remove this from your infrastructure if that's possible because this is gonna be something that's gonna cause you havoc and headaches over time because it's gonna be a, 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 a TCP IP stack that's gonna be exposed to this attack for quite some time. Because these things can be running any type of device, like we said, insulin pumps, printers, those type of things. So we see that, and so we're gonna be able to see not only the scan, but we actually see the actual attempt at the exploit. So we're seeing each stage of this attack, which I think is really cool. And again, this attack's probably only been out a couple of weeks. So it's really powerful stuff here. Again, we're gonna stitch that together here. I did wanna show you the last one, the last attack here as well, um, which is, we're gonna run it here. And this one takes advantage of um, DNS. And so let me show you that. So that, that ran the attack, Python script. There it is, um, the attack came in, and that's a different CVE. You can see it up here, it points to a different CVE, a common vulnerability. And you can see, let me pause it here. This has received a DNS code with a concat name, a C name, record value that matches attempts to exploit one of several known vulnerabilities of Ripple 20. So we've actually seen that DNS request with a C name that matches the CVE. So we're not only protecting and detecting that ICMP message and the IPMP for Ripple 20, we're also protecting the DNS variable that JSOF found. So I know this can get a little bit in the weeds, but the upshot is we are automatically looking for this. If it's in the feed, Xdrop's gonna find it. We can then quarantine it with your existing tools, we can alert you on it so that you can understand it. Because again, this is not something that's going to be logged and there will be no agents for this because this is IoT devices. So this is extremely hard for security teams. I appreciate your time, guys. This is a really cool attack um, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.